Hello everyone. I'm Dr. Om J. Lakhani. I'm a consultant endocrinologist working at Zydus Hospital in Ahmedabad. And I thank the organizers of this very interesting and wonderful conference, Dr. Rutul and Dr. Dharmendra for having me for this talk today. So today I'm going to discuss gestational diabetes. Where does it come from? Now this is the introduction to the same and I'm going to keep it brief and to the point. So from this, what I try and understand is we are talking about pathogenesis of gestational diabetes, and that is what I'm going to focus upon. So those who follow me on social media, we have this, uh, you know, uh, presentation which we have done, which is called unifying theory for the pathogenesis of diabetes mellitus or hyperglycemia. You can see the QR code. You can use this QR code to see the whole video. But the thesis which we are trying to generate is that while we are trying to divide diabetes mellitus into various subtypes, we are also trying to unify diabetes pathogenesis and try and understand what is the commonality between all these forms of diabetes. So what I believe is that all forms of diabetes or hyperglycemia occurs as a result of an imbalance between insulin production by the beta cells of pancreas and insulin resistance. So let me explain this point further. Right? So you have insulin, you have the insulin production by the beta cells of pancreas. On the other hand, you have insulin resistance. Now, because of obesity or because of ectopic fat deposition, visceral fat, the insulin resistance keeps increasing. But the body doesn't see it sit quietly. It keeps increasing the insulin production by the beta cell to match for this insulin resistance. But there comes a point of time where the insulin production is not able to match with the insulin resistance. And that is when diabetes occurs. So in all forms of diabetes, this imbalance exists. There's an imbalance between insulin production and insulin resistance. Now in type one diabetes, there is very little insulin production. So again, there is this imbalance. So even a slight tip of balance of insulin resistance triggers the onset of type one diabetes. Whereas in type two diabetes, insulin resistance is the main pathogenesis leading to increased insulin resistance. The body keeps compensating until a point where it cannot compensate any further. And that leads to development of hyperglycemia. So what happens in gestational diabetes? The same thing occurs in gestational diabetes. The patient generally has poor beta cell reserve to start with, but then it is compensated in a non-diabetic state or a non-pregnant state. But in pregnancy, there is increase of insulin resistance. And because of this, the poor beta cell reserve is exposed. So let me explain this point again further. So what happens is in pregnancy, because of various pathogenic factors or various physiological factors, I should say, there is increase of insulin resistance. Pregnancy is a state of increased insulin resistance. But again, in all the women, the beta cell compensates by this by increasing the production of insulin. But in women with poor beta cell reserve, to begin with, in such cases, the beta cell is not able to compensate for the increase in insulin resistance, leading to exposure of the same situation, leading to hypoglycemia. This is explained in this cartoon very beautifully. So as you can see, in a normal pregnancy, before pregnancy, there is a comp compensatory increase of beta cell. During pregnancy, there is increased glucose production and at the same time, increased insulin resistance. And after pregnancy, comes things come back to normal. But in women with gestational diabetes, there is poor beta cell function to begin with, right? And during pregnancy, thus, uh, there is increased increase insulin resistance, but the beta cell is not able to match up with the increased insulin resistance leading to gestational diabetes mellitus. This fun problem often uh, normalizes again after delivery because the insulin resistance immediately after delivery comes down. So this is the process of development of gestational diabetes. Now, what are the factors? So insulin resistance increases during pregnancy in all forms of pregnancy. Why does this happen? Well, there are many theories for this. One is that a hormone called human placental lactogen it is known to increase insulin resistance. So perhaps this is linked with the increased insulin resistance during pregnancy. It could be because of inflammation. Now there's a concept which is developing, which is known as meta-inflammation. 
that is inflammation involving all the organs of the body right often associated with obesity and ectopic fat so it could be meta inflammation because of metal obesity which contributes to this and then perhaps is the role of tnf alpha and it is found that higher tnf alpha in pre pregnancy state is associated with more insulin resistance during pregnancy so these are all things which contribute to insulin resistance during pregnancy of course the first point is common to all women so this would occur in uh, both obese as well as non obese women the other two is associated in obese women who are at a higher risk of developing gestational diabetes so is this increase in insulin resistance physiological to a lot of extent yes now remember in pregnancy the body is trying to conserve some amount of fuel for the fetus as well so the increase in insulin resistance is because the body wants to allow more fuel to pass on to the fetus there is increase in both central that is at the hepatic level as well as at the skeletal muscle and adipose tissue level that is known as peripheral insulin resistance and overall it is about 2 to 3 times increase insulin production so all this is a physiological state right so once again in pregnancy physiologically there is physiological increase in insulin resistance but in normal situation in normal women this is compensated by increase in the insulin production by the beta cells but in women with poor beta cell reserve if this insulin product production is not does not match the insulin resistance these women go on to develop gestational diabetes so what happens to the glucose output during pregnancy you'll be surprised that in fact the glucose output is also increased during pregnancy right there is 30% increase of glucose output in pregnancy and I'm, again i'm talking about normal pregnancy this is mainly driven by the liver this is what is known as central insulin resistance but despite this increased basal glucose output overall the glucose levels are uh, lower because of increased volume or because of increased utilization of the glucose so overall during pregnancy there is a state where there is both increase of glucose as well as increase of insulin so it's a state of insulin resistance as described so overall what is the rate limiting step for development of gestational diabetes overall it is the poor baseline beta cell reserve that is what leads to gestational diabetes so women with poor baseline beta cell reserve before pregnancy are likely to develop gestational diabetes compared to those women who have good beta cell reserve and can compensate for the increase in insulin resistance so pregnancy is like a stress test for pancreatic beta cell and this is something which is very important right so uh, what it tells us is that this beta cell function is exposed during pregnancy and the same women are likely to develop diabetes mellitus in future because in future the beta cell function will keep declining even if it does not decline the insulin resistance may increase because of increased weight gain and obesity at a later date in life and this would also again lead to diabetes mellitus so what uh, gestation diabetes does is that it come it exposes uh, the uh, poor reserve of the beta cell and that means that these women are likely to develop diabetes mellitus in future as well so that is something you need to be aware of so let me summarize what i talked about in this brief presentation so we said that in mother there could be pre pregnancy risk factors like uh, presence of obesity and inflammation and increased tnf alpha that again in all pregnancy there is increased insulin resistance because of human placental lactation but if in women with poor beta cell reserve there is if there is insufficient insulin production it ultimately leads to increase endogenous glucose production increase excessive peripheral insulin resistance and then role of placenta related hormone like hpl which discussed overall this leads to increased glucose production but reduced glucose uptake which is uh, the classical sign of insulin resistance this ultimately leads to hyperglycemia uh, in a short term consequent these women are likely to develop vascular problems like preeclampsia in a long term they are likely to develop diabetes mellitus uh, because like we said we are exposing the poor beta cell reserve of these women during pregnancy and to the fetus there is hyperglycemia and hyperinsulinemia which lead to macrosomia in a short term basis but in a long term these children are likely to develop obesity and type 2 diabetes so this was my brief presentation and again i thank the organizers for having me for the same thank you